All right, this morning we're going to be discussing how to parse out a file name out of a string or file location. And there's not really a quick answer for this because uh, we're going to be going through this. So we're going to declare a string and we're going to declare the string as a var car 25. And we're going to set the string equal to basically a file location. So we're going to say C folder and we're going to say file.txt. And I'm going to use a simple example here. And we're going to go through this. So if we select our string, this is a file location. Now you might wonder, uh, why would we want to get this right here, file.txt? And the answer is that some imports will sometimes involve the name of the file will have the date on it and you can actually pull off the date from the file. That's one. The other one, you will sometimes get an encrypted file or a file that requires a password. Uh, one of the ones that I've used is it's a mutating algorithm password. And the file name actually gives you information it doesn't come with the password, but it allows you to crack the password so that you can access the file. So you'll need the file name in order to crack the password to access the file. And so those are two instances in which you can use this. And there are probably hundreds of others. So the first thing we can do is we can apply. In SQL Server, there is a reverse function. And we can reverse this file name. So let's go ahead and do that. So you saw what it was before. You'll notice we just flipped it around. Okay, so let's look at the string briefly. Hold on a second. Call it string. You will notice that what we're going to be trying to do next is we're going to try to access this backward slash. Because basically what we're looking for is this part of the file. Now if we tried to access it from this angle, this is why we reversed it, we would have this slash here and we wouldn't be able to hit this slash. And by the way, if there's multiple folders, there's the purpose of reversing. So what I'm gonna do, and we're gonna go to this next, the next step, is let's do car index, which basically is going to locate an expression in a string. And we're going to do what we did above here, which is reverse S. Okay, let's do step one, now I'll do it in steps. Step one, as. And so what does this information tell us? Well, let's think about this. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we have nine. So basically, we found the location of where that slash is. And the next step will be, of course, okay, so we know exactly, uh, we flipped it around to where we can now access this backslash. Uh, we know where that backslash is. So the next thing we want to do is we want to take the, we're going to re-reverse it around, which is, this is when it's going to start getting a little confusing here. And by the way, when in doubt, you can always play around. Um, that's one thing. And that is one virtue um, of all programmers, all developers, everybody in general. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be reversing. That's why I'm having to work this out in my head. Um, is just test around. Say, okay, okay, I'm right here. Next thing I'm going to do is substring. And now substring, let's just demonstrate this one straight up. Let's go ahead and just do a substring here. And let's start at one, let's start at zero actually, and let's go to one just to show you what this results in. Okay. Okay, so let's start at one and let's go to five. Substring basically is gonna parse out, you can see, this much in this. We're starting out character one and we're going to character five. Okay. So obviously when we flip it around, we know we want to go to character nine. So we want to start at 1, but remember we reversed it around. So we can't substring 
we have to substring the reverse of s. Otherwise, if we substring s, it's going to start here. So you want to flip it around because that's what we've done up here. Okay. So we want to substring the reverse. We want to start at 1. And then what we want to do is we are going to want to identify to the car index point, right? Okay. So let's put that there. All right. And this is step 3. And you'll notice we have parsed out the filebot text. And of course, the, the slight unfortunate thing here is that it, it does come with a slash. Now, one thing you can do either with car index, one, one approach is you can play around with where this point starts because this is going all the way to nine. So I get a little confused always at this point just because I have to think about where the parentheses are at. So it's within this parentheses. This is that one. That's nice. So you can do, let's see if this will work. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so minus one. The other thing you could always do um, is you could always do a replace function. So one of the functions we also have in SQL Server is replace, right? And we take an expression, let's say dog, and we replace um, O with, and we're going to place with A. Dag. So. Uh, that's another function you could use so you could always replace it out, but this works here. So let's do that Okay, so that's step three now Okay, so let's just look at this again one more time. So What do we do? We reversed it around we found the car index of this backward slash or forward slash I guess it's a forward slash. Yeah, it's a forward slash um, and then we pulled out we substringed the file, but we do have one slight problem, it's still backwards. So now we want to flip it right back around. So now we're going to select and we're going to do the reverse. And I'm just going to put the parentheses here and I'm going to go ahead and put the substring in tie inside that. And I'll do this as step four. And you will see file text. Now, and from here again, you could you can substring off, or not substring, I'm sorry. You can replace off the text, the .txt. You could keep that. It, it's completely up to you if you'll know your own process. But let's say you were trying to parse off the date. This would allow you to parse off the date. If you were trying to parse off the string so that you could um, put that information for security, there you go. And so, essentially, this right here is one of the ways. Note that this, this S here is the input. So if you were doing this for a column, if you had a column on a table, let's say we had, you know, create table, hold on, uh, file names, and we had a file name as a var car, it would normally be about 100 if it's actually a file name. So we would put file name there. We would take this and we would put it here and here. And so that's how you can do that.